Hello fellas. Welcome back to Top 5 Choices, this is Haley from Top 5 Choices, and I hope you all are doing good, in today's video, I am gonna do a detailed review and pick the Top 5 Best Vlogging Smartphone, 2022. After doing proper researches, we came to the conclusion that meets the best in terms of overall. Kindly leave a like if you find this helpful, and I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications if you haven't. We will be also providing affiliates link to purchase from Amazon. Kindly use it for best offers and purchase from anywhere in the world. We'll be back with more videos. Glance quickly at the black Oppo Find X5 Pro and you'll likely mistake it for its predecessor. The Find X5 Pro has a 6.7-inch display like the Find X3 Pro and measuring 163.7 by 73.9 by 8.5 mm and weighing 218G, the Find X5 Pro is nearly the same size as the X3 Pro, only a smidgen heavier. That's not to say the similar design is at all bad, as the same unibody design that integrates the rear camera into the X3 Pro's rear is present in the X5 Pro. Only this time, you get an asymmetrical design as the X5 Pro drops back from four cameras to three. Despite this, the overall footprint of what I'll call the camera blister is a little larger than what it was on the X3 Pro. Much like the design, it's business as usual for the Oppo Find X5 Pro's display. Like the X3 Pro, the new phone has a 6.7-inch 3216x1440 QHD Plus display, which curves at the edges for a 92.7% screen-to-body ratio. Oppo made the interesting decision to drop the microscope camera found on the back of the Find X3 Pro, meaning the Find X5 Pro has a standard trio of rear snappers. A 50-megapixel camera with an f/1.7 aperture takes care of primary photography duties. It's supported by a 50MP ultra-wide-angle shooter with an f/2.2 aperture and 110-degree field of view. There's also a 13MP telephoto lens with an f/2.4 aperture. If those specs sound familiar, it's because they are the same as the Find X3 Pro. Moving on to the 50MP ultra-wide-angle camera, the Oppo Find X5 Pro does a solid job of delivering expansive, bright, and detailed shots. But some of the above issues remain, with the Find X5 Pro being a little overzealous with the brightness leading to colors that get close to being washed out compared to the more neutral Pixel 6 Pro shot. The higher-than-average 50MP sensor on the Find X5 Pro's ultra-wide camera does occasionally take expansive shots that have a little more detail when you really punch into a photo, notably in low light. Xiaomi's 12 Pro looks and feels very polished and premium. The metal frame is very slim on the left and right sides of the phone, where the front and back glass curve to meet it. The frame and rear Corning Gorilla Glass 5 panel have matte finishes, making the device quite slippery. The camera module around the back is made of metal and looks modern and sleek thanks to fine lines that separate the sensors. The ports and all cutouts in the metal frame are polished to perfection, with no sharp edges or corners. While the Xiaomi 12 Pro is a top-end smartphone, it lacks an official IP rating for dust and water resistance. Xiaomi did confirm to Gadgets360 that the phone has all the necessary seals in place to meet the equivalent of an IP53 rating, but this is still insufficient at this price, in my opinion, since we expect nothing less than an IP68 rating. It has become more common for Android manufacturers to skip obtaining an official IP certification of late, possibly to save a bit on cost. The phone's 6.73-inch AMOLED display has Corning's Gorilla Glass Victus protection and is also good at resisting fingerprints. The cover glass curves sharply on either side, but the display itself has a much milder curve. There are speaker grills on the top and bottom, and an infrared emitter on the top. The Xiaomi 12 Pro has three rear-facing cameras and all of them have 50-megapixel resolutions, which according to Xiaomi, should deliver consistent image quality. The primary camera has OIS, the ultra-wide-angle camera has a 115-degree field of view, and the telephoto camera delivers 2x optical zoom, 48 mm. Selfies are handled by a front-facing 32-megapixel camera. The primary camera of the 12 Pro is the first to use Sony's new 1-1.28-inch IMX707 sensor, which has 1.22 micrometers pixels. 
This in theory should help bring out more detail in all kinds of lighting conditions. It's noticeably larger than the Sony IMX766 1/1.56 inch sensor, which we've seen in plenty of 2022 Android flagships. Google Pixel 6 Pro Mobile was launched on October 19, 2021. The phone comes with a 6.70-inch touchscreen display with a resolution of 1440 by 3120 pixels at a pixel density of 512 pixels per inch (PPI) and an aspect ratio of 19.5 to 9. Google Pixel 6 Pro is powered by a 2.8 GHz octa-core Google Tensor processor that features two cores clocked at 2.8 GHz and two cores clocked at 2.25 GHz. It comes with 12 GB of RAM. The Google Pixel 6 Pro runs Android 12 and is powered by a 5,003 mAh battery. The Google Pixel 6 Pro supports wireless charging, as well as proprietary fast charging. As far as the cameras are concerned, the Google Pixel 6 Pro on the rear packs a triple camera setup featuring a 50-megapixel primary camera with an f-1.85 aperture and a pixel size of 1.2 micron, a 12-megapixel camera with an f-2.2 aperture and a pixel size of 1.25 micron, and a 48-megapixel camera with an f-3.5 aperture and a pixel size of 0.8 micron. The rear camera setup has autofocus. It has a single front camera setup for selfies, featuring a 11.1 megapixel sensor with an f/2.2 aperture and a pixel size of 1.22 micron. Google Pixel 6 Pro is based on Android 12 and packs 128 gigabytes of inbuilt storage. The Google Pixel 6 Pro is a dual SIM, GSM and GSM mobile that accepts nano SIM and eSIM cards. The Google Pixel 6 Pro measures 163.90 by 75.90 by 8.90 mm, height x width x thickness, and weighs 210.00 grams. It was launched in cloudy white, sorta sunny, and stormy black colors. It features an IP68 rating for dust and water protection. Connectivity options on the Google Pixel 6 Pro include Wi-Fi 802.11a-b-g-n-ac-ax, GPS, Bluetooth version 5.20, NFC, USB Type-C, 3G, and 4G, with support for Band 40 used by some LTE networks in India. Sensors on the phone include accelerometer, ambient light sensor, barometer, compass-slash-magnetometer, gyroscope, in-display fingerprint sensor proximity sensor, and fingerprint sensor. The iPhone 13 Pro Max retains the flat edges of the iPhone 12 Pro Max, but looks a bit different. For one, the camera array is larger than before, so it takes up a bit more real estate on the back of the phone. Weighing 8.46 ounces, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is also notably heavier than its 8.03 ounce predecessor but I'll allow that given the new iPhone Pro has a larger battery. The biggest upgrade to the iPhone 13 Pro Max's display, and biggest upgrade overall, is the new promotion display. This 6.7-inch panel can dynamically scale its refresh rate from 10 Hz to 120 Hz, which results in smoother overall performance and animations. The iPhone 13 Pro Max has a bigger camera array for a reason. The main wide camera is Apple's largest yet at 1.9 micrometers pixels, up from 1.7 micrometers, while offering AF-1.5 aperture, which is rated to deliver a 49% more light than the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And the ultra-wide camera offers a larger F-1.8 aperture, was F-2.4 for iPhone 13 Pro Max, for brighter pics while offering a wider field of view. Zooming on the iPhone 13 Pro Max gets a boost as well, as the iPhone 13 Pro Max's telephoto lens offers a 3x optical zoom, up from 2.5x on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And there's lots of camera upgrades beyond the hardware. For example, the iPhone 13 Pro Max leverages the ultra-wide camera to capture images as close as 2 cm away. I really enjoyed getting up close with this piece of wood on a nearby beach. While the iPhone 12 Pro Max struggled to get close, I could capture every nook and cranny with the new iPhone.
The Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra is simple, but stunning at the same time. I appreciate the sharp, squared-off angles, and I also like that the cameras aren't housed in a honking bump. They are more flush with the back of the handset. The overall look is minimalist and sleek. Another plus, the 6.8-inch display is gently curved, so it adds some aesthetic appeal without leading to accidental screen presses. My only complaint is that sometimes typing words or moving the cursor on the extreme left or right side of the screen can be a challenge. Despite having a slightly larger display than the 6.7-inch iPhone 13 Pro Max, the S22 Ultra is lighter at 8.07 ounces versus 8.5 ounces for Apple's handset. The Galaxy S22 Ultra feels solid and durable, and it should, as it's fortified with an armor aluminum frame and a Gorilla Glass Victus Plus back. We'll have to see how well this phone holds up in drop tests, though. The Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra looks determined to top our best camera phone list and unseat Apple and Google. Our testing shows that the S22 Ultra is a very good camera phone, but it's quite the champ. The Galaxy S22 Ultra boasts a larger 2.4M pixel sensor for capturing more light and data, as well as a super clear glass lens for capturing nighttime videos without flares. You also get a 12MP ultrawide lens, plus dual 10MP telephoto cameras that combine to offer 10x optical zoom and 100x space zoom. For more comparisons, check out our Samsung Galaxy S22 vs iPhone 13 Pro Max low-light photography comparison. Samsung is also doubling down on computational photography with its camera system. There's adaptive pixel technology that combines 9 pixels into one for better images in the dark, enhanced AI high-res processing and 4x faster multi-frame processing.